Hello, this is not your cam tutor, and in this video, I will teach you Guy Lussac's law under the topic of ideal gas laws. As always, I included examples so we can practice some calculations. First, let's discuss a little bit of concept about Guy Lussac's law. So, Guy Lussac's law says that at constant volume and fixed amount of the gas, Pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. Again, pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. So what do you mean by directly proportional? This means that if you increase the temperature, the pressure also increases. On the other hand, if you decrease the temperature, the pressure also decreases. So that's what you mean by directly proportional. And you can clearly see it on the graph of Guy Lussac's law. As you can see in the graph, as temperature increases, the pressure also increases. Now let's proceed to the formula for Guy Lussac's law. The formula is very simple and easy to memorize. It's P1 divided by T1 equal to P2 divided by T2. Now let's define the variables. So P1 is your initial pressure and P2 is your final pressure. Now, students would usually ask, is there a specific unit of pressure for Guy Lussac's law formula? And the answer is no. So I will put this as a note. No specific unit for pressure. But it is very important to take note, although there's no specific unit, the important thing is that you need to be consistent in what unit you are using. So for example, if you use ATM for P1, make sure you are using ATM as well for P2. If you are using Pascal for P1, use Pascal for P2. Or if you use MMHG for P1, make sure you use MMHG as well for P2. So again, no specific unit for pressure, but be consistent with the unit. T1 is the initial absolute temperature. And T2 is the final absolute temperature. What do we mean when we say absolute temperature? Absolute temperature means the temperature in the Kelvin scale. Again, when we say absolute temperature, it's the temperature in Kelvin. Therefore, for T1 and T2, you cannot use any unit for temperature. You can only use Kelvin as the unit. For temperature. So again, just a quick recap. For pressure, you can use any unit, but be consistent with that unit. And for temperature, you can only use Kelvin as the unit. Let's proceed to example one. A gas in a closed container exerts a pressure of 1.16 atmosphere at 29 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is dropped to 13 degrees Celsius, what will be the pressure of the gas? So this problem talks about the relationship of pressure and temperature. So we will be using Guy-Lussac's law. And we already discussed the formula. P1 
over T1 equal to P2 over T2. Now, if we read the problem, we can identify the variables. 1.16 atm is the initial pressure or P1. 29 degrees Celsius is the initial temperature or T1. 13 degrees Celsius is the final temperature or T2. So let's just list the given. P1 is 1.16 atm. So again, you can use any unit of pressure you like. So we can use atm. P2 is not given in the problem. So P2 is unknown. T1 is 29 degrees Celsius. But remember, in Guy Lussac's law, in the formula, we can only use Kelvin as the unit. So we need to convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin. And if you can recall, in order to convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin, you would just add 273.15. So for example, our T1 is 29 degrees Celsius. You just add 273.15. And this is equal to 302.15. And this will be Kelvin. So this is our T1. For T2, we are given 13 degrees Celsius. So 13 plus 273.15. And that is equal to 286.15 Kelvin. So this is our T2. Now let's substitute the numbers into the formula. 1.16 atm divided by T1 is 302.15 Kelvin. This is equal to P2, which is unknown. So just write P2 divided by T2 is 286.15 Kelvin. So we will be solving for P2. So what you can do is you can do cross multiplication. So this becomes 1.16 atm times 286.15 kelvin equal to P2 times 302.15 kelvin. And to solve for P2, divide both sides by 302.15 kelvin. So 302.15 Kelvin cancels on the right side. What remains on the right side is P2. And on the left side, Kelvin will cancel out. So what is left is 1.16 atm times 286.15 divided by 302.15. And if you solve that in your calculator, that is equal to 1.099, approximately 1.099 ATM. So the answer to this question is the final pressure is 1.099 ATM. For example, two, a gas in a closed container is pressurized from 101 kilopascal to 150 kilopascal. If the final temperature is 303 Kelvin, what was the initial temperature? So in this problem, we are given 101 kilopascal. This is our P1. And our final pressure is 150 kilopascal. And it says here, if the final temperature is 303 Kelvin, 
So this is our T2 or the final temperature and the initial temperature is missing or unknown. So let's substitute the values into the formula. P1 is 101 kilopascal. P1 is unknown, so just write P1. This is equal to P2 or 150 kilopascal divided by T2, which is 303 Kelvin. Again, what you can do is you can cross multiply. So this becomes 101 kilopascal times 303 Kelvin equal to 150 kilopascal times T1. So if you want to solve for T1, just divide both sides by 150 kilopascal. So 150 kilopascal will cancel on the right side. So what remains on the right side is T1. And on the left side, kilopascal will cancel. So you will solve this in your calculator. 101 times 303 Kelvin divided by 150. And the answer is 204 point zero two and the unit is kelvin so the initial temperature is 204.02 kelvin and this is the answer to the question let's proceed to our third example if the absolute temperature of the gas is reduced to one fourth of the initial temperature what happens to the pressure of the gas so according to the problem the final temperature is one-fourth of the initial temperature. Or mathematically, you can write that as the final temperature is one-fourth of the initial temperature. T2 is equal to one-fourth of T1. And then we have the guy lussacs law formula. P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. And T2 is one-fourth of T1. So you substitute T2 as one-fourth of T1. So what you can do again is you can do cross-multiplication. So this becomes P1 times 1 fourth T1 equal to P2 T1. Now, if you divide both sides of the equation by T1, what happens is that T1 will cancel on the left side and T1 will also cancel on the right side. So let's continue it here. What remains on the left side is P1 times 1 fourth and what remains on the right side is P2. Or you can rewrite this as P2 equal to one-fourth of P1. So the answer to this question is the pressure is reduced to one-fourth of the initial pressure. Because P2 is one-fourth of P1. And this is the answer to the question. And for the last example, a gas in a closed container exerts a pressure of 3.12 atmosphere at 55 degrees Celsius. 
what will be the change in pressure if the container is heated to 70 degrees Celsius? So if we read the problem, we can identify the variables. 3.12 atm is the initial pressure. 55 degrees Celsius is the initial temperature. And 70 degrees Celsius is the final temperature or T2. So if we substitute these in the formula, so we have 3.12 atm divided by T1, we need to convert 55 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So again, in order to do that, you just add 273.15. So 55 plus 273.15. This is equal to 328.15. Kelvin. So T1 is 328.15 Kelvin. This is equal to P2, which is not given in the problem. So just write P2 divided by T2. In the problem, the given T2 is 70 degrees Celsius, but we need to convert that into Kelvin. 70 plus 273.15 and that is equal to 343.15 Kelvin. So that's our P2. So in order to solve for P2, you can do cross multiplication. So 3.12 ATM times 343.15 Kelvin is equal to P2 times 328.15 Kelvin. Next is to divide both sides by 328.15 Kelvin. So this will cancel on the right side. So what remains on the right side is P2. And on the left side, Kelvin cancels out. So you have 3.12 ATM times 343.15 divided by 328.15. And this is equal to approximately 3.12. 26 and the unit for pressure is ATM. So the final pressure or P2 is 3.26 ATM. But if you read the question, the question is not asking for the final pressure. Instead, the question says, what will be the change in pressure. It is asking for the change in pressure. And in order to solve for the change in pressure, or delta P, we know the change is always final minus initial. So change in pressure is the final pressure minus the initial pressure. Final pressure, we just computed it, it's 3.5. 26 atm minus the initial pressure which is given in the problem 3.12 atm and this is equal to 0 0.14 atm so the change in pressure is 0 0.14 atm and this is the answer to the question